Hey everybody, if you've been watching my channel for a while you'll know that I have made a lot of videos to try and help people go from no bike to having a motorcycle, from going from 125s to the A2 or the A, you know, move, basically moving up through the licenses and getting into biking. I've got a whole playlist for it, it will really help you out if you want to do it. Well, because of this I get asked questions all the time for advice and stuff and I try to give the best grounded advice I possibly can for everyone because I remember I don't know the mentality and the personality of the people that are asking me I can only go on the way that they ask and uh, you know you can tell a lot about someone's personality very likely from the the attitude of the way that they write something now I'm dyslexic so I do understand that that doesn't mean you're stupid if you can't spell or something but if there's you know certain uses of words and stuff you get to know what people are like and you can kind of gauge their age and maybe what they should be doing or what would be best for them but I regularly get asked this question, which is like, I'm 26 years old, I've never been on a motorcycle ever in my life, and I really want to get into biking. What's my best course of action? And the first thing you'd think is, well, do a direct access course. You know, you're over 24, so you can get the full license, just go to a school, you'll have to do the CBT anyway, so that'll get you on a 125 and get your skills going, and then you'll, they'll probably move you up, or they may train you on the larger bike, and then they'll get you through your training, make sure you're safe and get through your tests, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, right, that probably is the best advice for that guy. But I really think you lose out if you don't ride a 125 for a while, or at least something like a 250, something that gives you time to make mistakes. You know, because a 125, the acceleration is not that quick. So you get time to think about what you're doing. The top speed, again, not that quick. So it's not like you can get yourself in a situation where it's you're gonna need absolutely massive brakes on the thing, which most 125s don't have, to stop in a decent amount of time. They tend to have brakes quite well matched for their sort of 70 mile an hour-ish top speed. So then I'm like, well, maybe get a CBT and get a 125 and ride that for a year and see how it goes and then go on to do the direct access. That would make the most sense really, you know, it's a bit of, bit of both. Don't wait two years, so you have to do a CBT again, but wait a year to get, you know, a bit of time under your belt on a 125. But also the reality is that makes it a lot more expensive nowadays because no bikes are cheap, none. And obviously if you know nothing about bikes as your first ever bike, buying second hand is a little bit risky. Unless you're good in mechanics anyway, and then, you, then you'll, you'll be all right. Uh, something that does get me, as I said, I've made videos, a lot of mechanical videos trying to help people to fix their own bikes because of the amount of money that they can save themselves basically. I've never had much cash. Yes, I'm a YouTuber, YouTuber with over 100,000 subscribers. This is my full-time job. I earn less than minimum wage. I am not joking. So I've always been one to try and save a buck where I can. And I think a lot of people appreciate that. And maybe some of my success comes from that. It's also kind of the idea of how my patron works is that if you've watched my videos over the years, and you know, maybe I saved you some motorcycle training. Maybe I taught you some lessons to fix something yourself and saved you some money. If I saved you 50 quid, that's like four years worth of patron and you get benefits with it. Yes, I guess that was a sales pitch for my patron, but that was kind of the point is I've tried to save people money and it, it, I saw someone the other day had to have their fork seals done and the head stock bearings done and it was like 500 and something quid, which I actually didn't think was too bad to be fair considering parts and labor costs. But then you remember what the parts costs are versus I just, my God, the amount of work I've done to my, well, my two bikes and Reno's bike in the past few years, if I'd had to pay labor on that, God, I would have spent thousands. So my point is basically this, I'm, whenever I'm asked that question of someone who's in there, you know, maybe 26-ish, and they've never ridden a bike before, and they want to get a bike, and they ask me, what should I do? I'm conflicted between those two things, between a year of a CBT and a smaller bike to get those essential skills down so you can learn and hopefully be safer in the future versus, well, you know, if you can control your wrist, it doesn't make much of a difference and it's actually a lot easier to ride larger CC bikes. Much, much easier. You have to have so much better clutch control on a 125 than you do on, say, a 600 like this. The only exception to that is bikes like my DRZ 400 SM, which you absolutely need to have as much, if not more, clutch control than a normal 125. Because <laughs> that thing just loves to stall because of the way that, that that bike is. You know, it's a single cylinder, it's carbed, it's yeah, it, it just leads to it. If it's not revving, it's gonna die. 
Whereas in this bike, you could just leave it in first gear and it will crawl along on its own. It's not going to stall. All 125s pretty much will stall. It's funny though, because they're fuel injected, so they really shouldn't. They should be able to stop it from stalling. So I'm going to put it to you. Now I do realise in doing this, saying to the internet, what's your opinion? We're going to get everything from, you shouldn't even have a licence or have to wear a helmet and you should be allowed to ride a Hayabusa at the age of one month versus no one should have a motorcycle ever. In fact, you shouldn't exist. And then everything in between. So you let me know what you think below. I, I say, I'm, I tend to say basically what I've said here. You can get the direct access, that would be the best thing to do, but you might feel like you've lost out a little bit by not having the smaller bike for a while, but maybe you don't need it. It's very much dependent on you. Which in itself makes it not such a good answer because when people are asking questions, they tend to want to be told what's the best thing rather than, well, here's your two options, you make a decision still. It's no different from when people contact me and say, oh, I really want to get into riding. What bike shall I get? I don't know. What do you want to do? How tall are you? Like, where do you live? What, what license have you got? What, it's just like every single question in the world. So that's what I tend to say. Maybe give your opinion below. Maybe give your story below. Did you go straight to a big bike and feel like it was a silly idea and you got a smaller bike for a while? Or, or did you go to a small bike first and then get a bigger bike and you've realized that it was really important to to you know hone those skills i didn't have a choice i spent seven years on a 125 because i couldn't afford to do anything else but i actually think those seven years on 125s taught me so so much about the, this both the skills of riding physically and also the skills of riding and paying attention to what's going on the road and predicting other road users and just knowing what to do to keep yourself safer now, I will add, my seven years on a 125 was ended through the side of a car when they pulled out on me, so I was, no, I was not perfect. <laughs> it wasn't my fault, but, you know, still, that's not the way you want to end things. If you've enjoyed this video, please do hit that like button, share it around with some of your mates if you wish to do that. I don't know why I'm saying this, no one does. I'm right, though, because, look, you didn't do it. You didn't press the like button, so you didn't. I'm right. <laughs> anyway, if you want to help support this channel, please do do that through Patreon, as I've mentioned earlier. Uh, and yeah, let me know what you think. I'll catch you in the next one. I need potatoes! Suspicious. <laughs>